Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. And today, well, I don't want to be talking too much about this subject. Actually, I do. I want to talk about very fucking much because it's a bit worrying as I buy in Scotland. Turns out, well, turns out to be some sort of illusion here, but Nicola Sturge in Scotland is a complete disaster. I'm not saying Scotland's doing worse than all the UK, England, uh, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Don't say them, they're not all perfect. But Scotland's reputation and stupidity levels have risen since the outbreak. And whatever the news decides to tell you the bullshit that the S&P is handling it very well, it's just a damn lie. And I'm going to give you a few examples here to show you exactly why, to show how bad things have gotten. This video isn't designed to, well, what's the word, full, do a full examination of what's been going on, but this is highlights of main examples which has been going on, which I would assume to some people who still are trying to find some evidence of how bad things are being run in Scotland is to be proven to be shown. So let's begin with the protests. Last weekend from the... Well, last weekend, we had a ominous amount of lockdown protests that were going on in Scotland. These were during the 16th and 17th of May. And, well, the, they were silent, well, they were silent, peaceful protests, and as we know from the European Union, there is protests happening in every major city across from Spain to Germany to Poland for having lockdown procedures and ritual hate against the European Union. And let's say Scotland is trying its best to be part of the European project, despite we don't want it, right? So how many protests did we have? We had quite a lot, really. We had five of them there were, and they were in multiple locations as well in these five cities, despite this was actually not just a Scottish thing, it was in the UK as well. It happened down in England as well. The ones that happened in Scotland were in Aberdeen in Hazelhead Park or Delphine Park. One was in Dundee at Bulgari Park um, and... Kimbane Park, I hope I'm saying that right. Edinburgh was in Hillwood Park and Holyrood Park, quite big parks those ones are. One was in Glasgow, Glasgow Green and Glasgow's Queen's Park, you know, beside Queen's Park Rangers. And Inverness was at Blight Park and Castle Heather Park. Quite noticeable spots, right? But the weird thing was... The PNJ and any of the other newspaper didn't really fucking care about this. That's the problem. They said there wasn't anyone there. There were people there. And even if, in, if you look at an updated version, it says, oh, there, there were people there. Yeah, there wasn't a lot. But this was just the start of the ease of losing control. And also, a few of the takeaway places decided to, to please themselves. And they would assure that they could follow the social distancing policies. This included places like the bypass outside of Aberdeen as the Starbucks. That is just drive through only. That is fine. But it didn't go all that well. There was two very significant ones that had very big problems. One I am very aware of. The other one I am not. This would include... KFC in Inverness, this picture right here, where massive queues of cars went to KFC to have a KFC meal, which led to police getting involved. I stopped paying attention to how stupid the support was, but the other one I did pay more attention to, which I kept seeing on my phone, was this one at Burger King in Elgin. They said things were going well at the start. They decided to open up because they were told that it was okay. They could do the social distancing. Same as in Venice. Same as Starbucks in, outside of Aberdeen. But they had a few problems, right? Their cash machines broke. 
this massive queue built up building over nearly an hours over an hour's worth of queue of traffic because people were so desperate for their Burger King how fucking stupid this is after the look but the police got involved the license got taken off of them I'm not sure what it's like now but looks like the some of these places are pleasing them fucking selves but looks like somebody needs to be controlling of how much people can come to the site at once but if the police have to come there and shut down the place not and there were many things to come after that we recently had a massive amount of people going to edinburgh beach just check how many people were going across the beach at edinburgh this was one of the warmest days we actually had this year and probably the good start of the summer and there was heaps of people not social distancing or anything and even if you see the police officers here they were not there to take anyone arrested they were just telling people to go away and keep away from each other they weren't even doing their jobs i would rather say this is when the police are acting much like pussies in other words and there's also another problem people have not been able to collect their rubbish or keep them in a certain safe location away from their house because there's so much shit in their bins they can't do anything about it so what did they do instead they fly tipped and ever since well we all got told oh all these banks were supposed to be opening on the 1st of june people weren't gonna wait for that so people started doing this fly tipping back to the usual shit that we did before the massive amounts of fly tipping happening all over scotland not just in where i took these these pictures were taken there was a massive amount of rubbish being thrown everywhere it was really unsettling and it wasn't just that as well there was also government governments of areas of local councils have gone under fire for not understanding why the you know the country and the way the government from the south of edinburgh isn't working with the north such as here where it is reported council co-leaders complain about nicola sturgeon over government minister's blatant attack on staff that's not good nicola is it but what happened the co-leaders of aberdeen city council have complained to nicola sturgeon about following the scottish government's minister claims that are letting businesses down over coronavirus relief i thought businesses were important but then again you'd keep certain businesses open if they followed a certain guideline even if those guidelines are met and even if people aren't following the guidelines yet they still stay open anyway there is a few businesses doing that anyway but what happened in the aberdeenshire area where there's a lot of personal businesses big businesses and there's a lot of misconception of what could actually be happening in the area as the oil industry is going down despite the government keeps saying we're going to make loads of money out of oil when we know the oil price isn't going anywhere may i continue last week was revealed over 60 percent of the 2266 bids for emergency funding made to the city have been successful the low the second lowest rate of the councils of the north of the border really you're supposed to be looking after businesses and this is how much fucking give them i like okay but it's understood a further 35 percent have been deferred or rejected with many awaiting clarification and additional details before they can be fully detected the council said it prospected 95 percent of all applications within the time limit the figures approved by the aberdeen crucial uh central sorry msp and local government mr kevin stewart to accuse the local authority for letting businesses down as almost all of its con counterparts have paid out more to firms in need that's not good is it that's not a good way to go that's really bad i mean really you're making this much businesses in the aberdeen north 
that bad. You can even get the 60% done. I mean, you got 60%, but that's still 40% left on the chopping board, ready for the knives to come out. That's not good. But it also had led some people to quit their jobs. Even people like this guy here from the SNP. He quit his job. An Aberdeenshire councillor has quit the SNP and said as an independent instead. Well, that's not good. If he was an SNP and he's gone this far about the care of lacking of the area, which is related to what I said about before, that's not good. It's really, this doesn't help. But let's go and talk about the care homes, which we'll be talking about the massive amount of fuck up the SNP government has done next, in my next video. But let's go and talk about that place in Sky. Sky didn't go very well. It even, when there was an investigation going on, and not just in Sky, the care homes in Scotland are absolutely in fucking shatters. The entire thing is, it was an absolute disgrace. But let's talk about Sky. This is a title from the article here. Three more coronavirus deaths take total up to ten in Sky Home. Now this is maybe one place in Scotland that ne doesn't seem to be getting talked about very much. Well, it actually got massive public a, a watch and saying how dare, how could it get so bad. Well, let's tell you what happened with the event. Well, what happened was when they did an investigation up at the Sky Care Home to make sure everything was okay, when they investigated the investigators, whoever they were, realized the place was massively out of its depth, to put it lightly and nicely. It was so far out of depth, it w was really a case for them to remove the license. And that was just a mild assumption or talk about what actually happened there. Because people were not being protected, PPE was absolute shameful, people weren't caring, and there'll be more document about that in the future. The news has done that enough. But let's talk about the care homes in Scotland. Now, I don't want to be a bugger about this, but put the face to the facts. The deaths in care homes in the entire UK are more significant in Scotland than there are in England, Wales and Northern Ireland put together. I believe that's what the numbers are. But we actually had an actual number that came out of how much people died in care homes, where 166,000 people died due to coronavirus happened in Scotland alone. That is quite unreal. It is quite an assumption of a number, where apparently the highest death rate of coronavirus deaths in care homes, despite the media going absolute fucking nuts about PPE, was in Scotland. But the news would always appreciate the SNP for how amazingly it could have done. No wonder the charities did more of the fucking work than the government did. Thanks, people. You actually look after your own, not the government. And with 166,000 people dying more in Scotland than in England and Wales and Northern Ireland, it brings the question, what the fuck happened? Well, it hasn't been the first time these numbers or what was going on up there fucked up. Before there was reports about the numbers that the Scottish government were trying to produce to people were inaccurate in every single way you could imagine. The amount of people that were infected were not the people who were infected. There were other words we didn't know. And the Scottish government, I believe, still doesn't have a fucking clue who's infected, who's dead, and who's not. Because, funny enough, just like every other country around the world, the death re re register thing doesn't seem to be getting recorded properly. And everyone who was actually infected with coronavirus, if you were elderly, you were sent back to the fucking care home. Which happened more in Scotland than it did in England. Why? I don't fucking know. And I really don't want to know, so I don't end up spewing my own sick. But may I guess, 
they allowed people to do this and they said it was okay. Maybe it's just a way to get rid of those white supremacist old fuckers, eh? Maybe that's how it works with the government nowadays, making it more progressive as it is. I know I did skip that little bit of information there, but still. And there was another thing which actually showed up called the Scottish Government has no record of how many people have been contact traced for coronavirus or COVID-19, says it in this article here, which actually shows quite a worrying assumption of what could be happening in Scotland, despite people not having a proper record of how things are going, because I believe they had no idea what the fuck they were doing. Not any of everyone would tell you that, but they basically that was the assumption. They had no fucking idea what was going on. And this is why I stay up in the north. Don't bother that shit in the south. Let's read the article. The Scottish government officials have no record of how many people in Scotland have been contact traced for coronavirus since the pandemic began. That's not good. The Health Secretary, Jane Freeman, was asked to provide figures during the government's daily briefing on Sunday, but was unfortunately able to turn over the information. Following the multiple follow-up requests of the Scottish Government failed to provide details of how many admitted to the information is not heard clearly, and in some cases is a strictly entirely because of patient confidentiality, the bullshit reason. And... Just to put another note there, Jane Freeman actually's job is actually getting threatened here, but it's kind of a Dominic Cummings kind of thing, because Jane said, oh, if I knew this was happening, I would have done something sooner. Well, you should. You're the health secretary of Scotland. It's kind of your fucking priority. But the thing is, the NHS in Scotland's been a disaster anyway. Just look at the BBC interview between Nicholas Sturgeon and Andrew Neil, he describes exactly what the fuck was going on in Scotland, which I might play at the end of this video so you have another clear idea of how fucking bad it was. But may I guess, people are calling for her to be fired. We have 166,000 people dead at your number, uh, I would kind of think so. And all the excuses have to be is, oh, I don't know. And Nicola was like, well, she is the, she's better than the last female wife I had in that position or somewhere in that medical position, right? Sure. All p females powerful fucking shit. Anyway, let's continue. The same excuse was given for why an outbreak at a night conference in Edinburgh the February was not disclosed to the public and concerns have been raised over the failure. Trace numbers of individuals had came into contact with the delegates. Yes, this was another thing that happened in Scotland which completely fucked up. Why, I don't fucking know. But it looks like there was an actual excuse by it. And the BBC, I'll give them the credit for this one, actually asked them about it and actually gave out a decent report for a fucking change instead of going with the Scottish Government on this one. And apparently the what when Nicola was asked about this, she was at, she said it was wrong to publicize the event or what was going on and let the people who were doing the in case to let them go on instead of telling the entire fucking country, oh yeah, coronavirus is in fucking Scotland. And when did this happen? February 2020. So you were telling me the Sc Scottish capital was infected with coronavirus on the 20th of February and you did nothing about it because it was wrong to publicize the event. Fuck you, Nicola. Why you give her credit, I don't know. And there was actual people there who were MPs and they had no idea too. So it wasn't just the people in the public that weren't known. It was officials as well as a man called Douglas Mully. You might have heard of this guy before because he is a guy who is the only Labour candidate for the north of Scotland or anywhere in Scotland. He was the only guy who won a Labour seat. 
give him that. And he never heard anything about it. And he was in it. And he was tested. But the thing was, nobody in there got told about it till afterwards. But you know what happened before that happened? I bet you wouldn't guess. I bet you wouldn't guess. Well, what happened after that? 70 people were at that conference, yes? They all got tours around the Edinburgh city centre. Yes, they did. They got individual tours and minging amongst the people in groups, I don't know, up to 70. I believe it was 70 people, I think. And it was like groups of that people that were at the conference were going round Edinburgh city centre on a tour. Don't know about you, but that sounds like a real perfect way to cause a pandemic, don't you? What a fucking blunder that was. And let's also talk about a subject that probably would be the best to last. Not the anything sad at all, but probably fucks up a lot of people along the way. For the amount of people who have been unemployed for the while has risen. Between January and March, the unemployment number in Scotland during the lockdown, or during this time frame, has went to, risen to the lowest rate apparently, to 113,000 people leaving to be unemployed. Absolute fucking disaster. Right? Disaster. And this is during the bloody times of that in the lockdown, or just before the lockdown even started implementing. That was bad. But the amount of people between March and April to join Universal Credit skyrocketed. With the first numbers before this happened during March was 111,400 people were signed up for Universal Credit. And that number by the end skyrocketed to 188,000. Yeah. That has skyrocketed very far, very far to join Universal Credit. So, during this time, Nicola Sturgeon's government decided to keep everyone under lockdown for a while. And you do realise when you keep people under lockdown for a while, it doesn't help them very much. And this is why the unemployment and uni Universal Credit has skyrocketed. And most for the young people, which apparently this is affecting more, despite self-businesses, I give respect to them. But most young people have these hospitality jobs, apparently known as slave jobs. I don't know. But these were jobs such as hotels, restaurants, barmaids, barmen, something I was actually going to put my name for. And yeah, now all those people seem to be unemployed. A few people I know up north don't have a job right now, but they're still okay to be safe when it comes back, but we don't know when these fucking hotels are coming back. Despite there is a full explanation of phase one to four, what could be happening next is out the fucking question. The question is, it's not a problem anymore, and people are still getting sick of being stuck inside, and people are hopefully realizing how bad Scotland is getting. But the thing is, the government has persuaded the people so much, they won't realize how bad things have gotten. But if this video has got to any years past the one minute mark, and realize how much of the shit has been going on, you might be in the right path. And I think I should end this video with the Andrew Neal's interview with Nicola Sturgeon to show how bad Nicola Scotland has gone because it is an absolute brilliant watch on our, my behalf. It is absolutely brilliant getting knocked down when she just gets absolutely trashed by him. It's fucking great. So if you guys enjoyed that video, I hope you learned something from that and we will be continuing to talk about what happened during that night conference, the numbers, and we have a lot more to talk about, because Scotland is turning into a fucking nightmare.
Well, <laughs> to be perfectly accurate. Let's, as we come to the end, let's look at your record in health. You said all Scottish patients, 100%, mm -hmm. should start receiving treatment within 12 weeks. Did you wrote that guarantee into law when you were health secretary, yeah. longest serving health secretary? What proportion of patients are getting treatment within uh, 12 we're, weeks? We're not meeting that, what, what that it? target. It's below, it's the 80 percent um, or so it should be 95 no, percent um, but we're not meeting that target we're not meeting well, it's, you like, hit 72 indeed it is not good enough but all health services are undergoing pressure from increased demand Scotland is no different there what is different in Scotland is the focus we are bringing now to uh, addressing these issues so if you take the audit Scotland report that was just published uh, a few weeks ago a couple of months ago their annual report on performance of the NHS they say that on seven out of the eight key waiting times targets including uh, that one there are now more people been seeing within right. those targets than was the case in but the year it before. also said that out of these eight targets you're only hitting two of them uh, absolutely uh, two out of eight absolutely and, and can I just say you made this hundred percent target a legal car guarantee I mean, have you or the health ministers been charged with breaking the law? It's not a criminal uh, law, but... No, but it's a civil offence. But it, but it sets out the steps but that health boards have to take. Guarantee. We have set out... We've, we've got an £850 million pounds waiting time improvement plan underway. The Audit Scotland report, which uh, you've so, quoted to me so, as well, more patients are being no, seen within these you, targets now than in well, the year before. What's the point of a legal guarantee, then? It means nothing, does it? Well, there's 1.8 million people since that came into uh, operation that have been seen within that target... That's would still not only 72%, necessarily have been but, but 1.8 million people have benefited from that. That is you the point of having those kind of like targets. You are, you are way behind. I, I'm not denying. I, I'm not denying that. All but, health services have these challenges. Um, we are addressing these challenges. <laughs> In many of these targets, we uh, A and E, for example, we are way ahead of the performance of health services in other parts of the UK. Well, do you think it's a, a the, the, it's a comfort to no, someone I, well, in Glasgow? That they're not having to wait no, as long for what, somebody in Grimsby. No, 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 I don't. What I'm saying, I regularly get challenged by Conservatives and Labour in the Scottish Parliament saying if only we were in power, it would be so much better. I don't think it's unreasonable to say, yes, we have challenges in Scotland, but we are dealing with these challenges more effectively well, you say you're than dealing these with other them, parts but as of the I look, UK. Only two of your eight waiting time targets being hit. You've been in for a long while. You haven't hit the A&E target since 2017. The two-month cancer car target you haven't hit since 2013. Children are dying in a new Glasgow hospital because the water's contaminated, oh, perhaps we... by pigeon droppings. A new multi-million pound Edinburgh hospital, should have opened in 2012, is still unfit to open. You can't even get the ventilation system to work. You've got the worst drug addiction problem in Europe, but you cut drug treatment budgets by 15 million. You clung on to your last health minister. You're under pressure now to sack her successor. I mean, you've called for legislation to protect the NHS from Donald Trump. Maybe the NHS needs legislation to protect it from Nicola Sturgeon.